Welcome back to Warcraft Total War and the Trade Coalition campaign, also known as the Goblins. Alright, we will fight the Battle of Sulfarak next, where Chief Ukhors, the, the leader of the Farak Trolls, has 3021 men, or Trolls. Army consists of Samshire Nomad Spearmen, Samshire Axe Throwers. Can penetrate armor, we have a Farak Shadow Blades, the air version of Rogues, really good elite infantry. We have the Enchanted Tiki Warriors, they are also elite, they are enchanted beings, they are not humanoids, so they have unlimited morale. We we'll fight to the death, we have the armored scorpions, they also fight to the death, they are really powerful. As we saw in the other episode. <coughs> we have the leader himself, he has a Farak Champions bodyguard. And then we have the Century Blood Drinkers, they are Berserkers. We have the Frack Champions, they are also their own unit. There are the Bodyguards and there are the normal ones. Okay, that's the Frack Army. So we want to control both armies ourselves in battle. Army Strength Ratio, Balance of Power, 9 7 in our favor. Okay, let's. Fight the battle on the battle map. Finish off the Frack Trolls. Today got some addition of the game, the mod. They weren't that many in the beginning, now they have a full sized army. Fortunately, unless they have them recruited, like in the previous Balancer unit. Alright, let's see here. We will wait for better weather. Start deployment. And yeah, here, here's the army. Okay, <coughs> we have the Sulfurak settlement here. The walls. The settlement they used the Aztec. The huge city. Custom settlement here. We have vanilla, I believe. Aztec, but they're skinned to be like the Furak trolls. It's a, as an Aztec, a huge. Uh, City, I believe. <coughs> Very skinned uh, with the uh, Faraki colors. Alright. So we have two armies. We have uh, Goblin Brusiers, Medium Infantry. We have the Goblin Heavy Infantry. Heavy Infantry of the Goblins. I think all the heavy infantry should be in shield wall formation. It protects them against missile attacks. The, the trolls have a lot of missile attacks. Let's group them and place in one line. Okay, and then we have the Brusiers. We had only one of them. We also have the Tinkers. They are elite infantry. Few in numbers. They might become more numbers in a later version. They will be placed in front. No, they will be placed behind others. Okay, so the weakness with the tinker Tinkers is that they are few. They are otherwise elite infantry. We have the Tail Gunners, the normal gunners of the Goblins. We have the Sappers, the Dynamite, dynamite Throwers, the Goblins. And we have a unit of pirate musketeers. So we forgot to place the gunners in loose formation. We'll do that. And one line. The pirate musketeers, they are similar to the tail gunners, but they include dark iron dwarves and Casmodan dwarves too. They have better stats. I believe they have better attack and better charge. And better defense. 8 defense instead of 6. 13 attack instead of 5. And 14 missile attack instead of 8. So the Goblin Tail Gunners have really bad miss, uh, melee attack. Uh, while the <coughs> Pirate Musketeers use sabers in melee, so they are better. Uh, abilities at a glance. Um, effect against armor, excellent morale. While the Goblin Tail Gunners have better stats, abilities I mean, 
effect against armor, combat bonus in woods or snow, excellent morale, can't hide, very good stamina. A good stamina. Okay. Then we have the rogues, the best infantry of the goblins. Of course, they have some other infantry that is probably as good or better, but um, they are not goblin units. So the hobgoblins, for example, are really good too. The bodyguard. 17, 8, 13, 3. Here we have 16, 4, 13, 1. So yeah, the hobgoblins are better. They have better hit points and better abilities, probably. Maybe not abilities. The rogues have, have good abilities. Okay. The other troops of the second army will show up when we lose troops from this army. So that's a frame that we need to waste these troops first. They are actually better than the other troops because we have a lot of rebels in the other army. They wanted to control the generals, they didn't want to control the other army. Okay, we will pause the game here and take control of the general. By the way, I am thinking about updating the mod and uh, redo the, the update from s uh, last summer. Uh, but this time with working trades, I am just thinking which version I should use. If I should go back to the 2021 release from May and just redo everything on it. Or if I should uh, <coughs> if I should uh, take Trug's version, one of them, and and uh, and add my changes to on top of it. I don't know. Trug has many different versions. I would use the probably the oldest one that didn't add any new uh, factions, just so we can have the same version I, I am playing here, but with working traits, because that's the goal. Uh, later we might release a, a version with new factions and such, such as Gilneas, Altrak, some Larry Trolls, Uldor, and uh, Kirin Thor, also known as Dalaran. I also believe the Kentors are a possible faction, but um, that version requires a lot of uh, work in order to polish it and add troops and recruitment and a lot of stuff, strat models and change the, the menu, the UI of the faction selection screen because uh, it crashes. When, when you add the uh, seven kingdoms factions to medieval two total war kingdoms mods, then, then uh, the faction selection screen will start to crash when you select too many factions in a row at once. Uh, so in this version of World of the War where we have like between 20 to maybe 24 factions, uh, the, the faction selection screen do not crash when we select factions, but in his version where he has added five, uh, uh, I mean six new f factions to the game uh, from the Kingdom's expansion factions, in, in that version you can't select everyone because it will crash, and the only way to solve that is to replace the entire UI with the UI of Warhammer beginning of the end times or Hyrule Total War Classic Ultimate. I did that work on Hyrule Total War Classic Ultimate, replaced everything. <coughs> it will add 31 factions in the faction selection screen. I believe currently there are not enough space for 31 factions, neither in custom battle nor in the campaign menu. But with the new UI you get 31 factions in both custom battle and in, in the faction selection screen. Okay, let's pause the game here. Alright, I'm back. So it worked. We are controlling the general. Let's start the battle. Right. Reinforcements. Trade Prince Jaster. Ah, uh, we forgot to remove the general from the ally. Allied army. I guess. The allied troops. They are over here. They should uh, should still be controllable. They should I believe they will be sent in whenever we lose troops. We have a new general there too. They can't take control of more than one general, I believe. In the battle. Okay, on the walls. <coughs> the Fracky Troll Settlement. We have axe throwers. seem to be moving off the walls. We have some 
Shadow Blades, Spearmen, other stuff. They spawned. They only had like four or five units, then they spawned a lot of troops thanks to the garrison script. Sun Hornet General. They do not have a ram. That's bad news. We have the Bombard, but it's really bad at actually hitting targets. So we will, we will attack the walls, not the gate. It's easier to hit the, the walls. Might actually move it, move it a bit. Yeah. All right, so we have two generals, but as we are controlling both <coughs> both armies, he won't get suicided by the N by the AI. Usually the AI would send in the bodyguard first and get them killed. But uh, we are controlling both armies now. So we just need to spend this army first before the other army shows up. When we have spent one unit we'll get one of the other units. It's a shame we need to spend the better stuff first and be reinforced with the weaker stuff. I would have preferred the opposite but yeah, I should have probably started the battle with the other army, but I don't know if they had any bombards. I don't think so. We couldn't start it without the bombard. We will lose the battle if the bombard fails to, to take down the wall. And uh, if, if the walls are still standing, then we will lose. It could happen because the bombards are really bad at hitting their targets. that's the case we'll just load the save and uh, wait on the rams to be built <coughs> so there are a bunch of versions by Trag I received the latest one today actually has uh, six new factions and a lot of work done on them and all that but there is a lot of work required to polish the symbols of the factions and just give them proper strat models and other stuff. The UI as I said need to be replaced to prevent the game from crashing when you select too many factions in a row at once in the faction selection screen. Okay, uh, so I don't want to use that version as the base for... I, I mean I want this version of the mod that I'm playing here but with working traits and to get that version can't use his latest version because it has a lot of factions and such added. Uh, instead uh, I would use his oldest release actually but I would need to manually add uh, my changes to it. I believe he has added my changes, most of them at least, to the latest uh, build that he has but the problem is that uh, it has a lot of unfinished stuff in it too, like the, the six new factions that need a lot of work for them to be polished and work properly and such. Uh, so I think the easiest way is to either take the May 2021 release and redo my stuff on it or take Trag's oldest version where he had the new traits and family members and uh, change the position of the horde starting generals so they weren't uh, starting in the cities and instead started outside I believe if we take that version we get Trag's stuff and at the same time uh, I, I will need to do the same stuff I did on the 2021 20, release. If I used the 2021 20, release instead, we wouldn't get the drug stuff. I could add it again, of course, but I failed to add his traits properly, so... Because of that, it's probably better to use his version. I checked that version already, it's stable. Let's fast forward. We need to be zoomed in on the unit to fast forward when we have the, the tool on. Or the, I mean the immersion mod on. Okay. 
Now we should be able to take down the walls. The goblin bombards. <coughs> Speed on. Some slow motion there. So the Frag Trolls can win the battle, but only if we fail to take down the walls. Taking down the gate is not an option because we will miss the gate. It's easier to hit the wall, so we'll do that. Hopefully, they will destroy one of the blocks there, the wall. Let's see. There are a lot of goblins. So all the unique units like the trolls and the bandits and such that the goblins are supposed to have in their roles today are only available from lands where those peoples are, for example the humans in human lands, trolls in troll lands and in the horde areas and uh, we saw the pirate musketeers are available a little, a little bit here and there in bandit regions and uh, yeah, goblin marks in goblin lands and ogres in ogre lands, but I think in the next version we will change that so that the, the trolls and the ogres and the humans that the goblins are supposed to have they will be available from all the goblin areas as normal units and I believe we will also remove some of the units from the Markner roster because they were supposed to be unique for the goblins I just made them marks because they fit that role too but we might change that to make them unique for the goblins. Then it won't be a proper goblin faction from the start. It, it will be more of a mix, like it's supposed to. It's named the Trade Collision, not the goblins. And uh, one would say that the Trade Collision attra uh, attracts trolls, ogres, and humans that want to earn money through criminal activity and such which the goblins excel in. Yeah, we are uh, damaging the wall. I don't know if it will be enough to uh, take it down. We destroyed a few of the boulders here. The fortifications, I mean. We are taking it down. The question is, will we run out of ammo? Okay, so I think we will we'll use uh, the, the infantry first to, to kill their troops, but I don't know if the gunners can fire on uh, units that are on the walls. There are no units on the walls anymore, see, so we can't really use them then. Everyone is on the other side of the wall. We'll send in the infantry, we'll send in the Goblin Bruseers, I believe, first. We'll separate them from the Tinkers, if they say Tinkers are elites. likely that I will use the older version of Trug where he added all the changes that I added from his submod to this version and also with working trades and then I just need to redo the stuff I did last summer. It wasn't too much. I had also done some stuff in April and May I believe. I will just need to check the pictures on Mother Bay and 
read my information and after doing that I will be able to, to know exactly what I have done and then I will just redo it on top of the build that Trag uh, had finished first, the one without the new without the new factions. His latest version without the new factions. I will add my changes on top of it and then we will re-release it. I didn't even do an article on the 2022 release because uh, I was so disappointed that the traits didn't work. It felt like a failure so I didn't bother to do an article otherwise I would have made an article with pictures and videos where I would have detailed every single change but because uh, the traits stopped working I felt like it was a failure still good enough to release but it needed to be remade later so, so I didn't bother doing an article. We'll do the article when I have remade the same changes again on, on Trug's version. Then we will have working traits too. Then we'll do an article. So the release of 2023 will be very very similar to the release of 2022. Used with, with uh, more traits and such. I mean working traits, triggers for traits. So, so you can expect like the same update but it working traits and also I believe I will do some fixing <coughs> for example there were very few changes I thought about doing that I, I will do here we have Tinkers, they are the same unit as the general just a unit of their own ok so the changes I wanted to do yeah, I wanted to fix around the sword. That I can do even on this version, I believe. It would be compatible because the model is already in use. I would just need to edit the model in Milkrip 3D. And then I replace the model that it's currently loading with the fixed model. And it actually would have a sword. So in the next video where I play the Night Elves, we will have Tyrande and Vispervin using a sword in melee. It looked bad and she didn't have a sword and fought unarmed. We are through the enemy's walls, into the breach for glory and victory! Ah, we destroyed the gates, I mean the walls, perfect. Here we have the Dark Iron Dwarves, and the Casmodan Dwarves. Goblins are about the same size as the Dwarves, just not as, as wide. But they are about this tall. So this is a Merkner unit, but it's supposed to be also <coughs> a Goblin unique unit. So we will see which Merkneris will stay Merkneris and which ones will become unique to the Goblins. I used them for both in, in, in this version. <coughs> but I will make all of the goblin units available from all the goblin areas going forward. So let's say they stay Merkneris, they will still only be available from the correct regions if recruited by other factions as Merkneris, but <coughs> for their trade collision they will be available everywhere. Uh, if they are not Merkneris then they will be unique to the trade collision like the way it originally intended to be. So the bandits and the bandit raiders for example, the bandit cavalry, they will be unique for the goblins. They might stay mercenaries but the, the goblins will get them from everywhere. The, the, the bandit raiders, they are supposed to be the goblin uh, cavalry, light cavalry and then the, the bandits themselves are supposed to be the goblin medium infantry. The tro higher troll archers are there, like archers, and uh, then the ogres are one of their heavy infantry units. Okay. So I've opened up the, okay, the walls, and I will let the bombard fire at will. And we will. And in the infantry, we'll pause the game first. I want the Brusiers to attack first. I really 
just attack. Same unit with all three. <clears throat> Forward Berserkers into the wall, into the breach. I mean, have made a breach in, in their wall. So enter the breach. Berserkers. Send the one to general. There's no good position for the gunners in this battle. We have the wall in the way. Bombard will be allowed to fire at anyone. Okay, so we waste the Bruseers first. They are medium infantry. They are better than the rebel. We didn't have any rebel in this army, so... I guess when we lose the Bruseers, we'll send in rebel from the other army. They will need to march a longer way, but... A longer distance, but that's fine. Yeah, so the future trade coalition army will be more varied. Like in custom battle, they they also have access to those units in this campaign. But you need to hold specific areas on the map. <coughs> in the next version, of course, that won't be the case. As I said, they, they will instead be able to get humans, trolls and ogres from all their areas. They upgrade the settlements enough. You will make sure they fit. Recruitment. I, I might have done it already. Then I just need to remove the hidden resource from the units to, to enable them for their trade collision from everywhere. There's the bombard. So they have a huge arm over there. We also have the towers. I don't trust the towers. They might actually fire on our troops. Let's see if they do. Yeah, I think they, it, the, the tower is firing. by the right. almighty lord or a military genius can bring us victory from this disgrace it didn't sound like it, like it went too well <coughs> the animation caused the goblin to become larger. It's because of the Nilla death animation there. Can't be fixed unless the death animation is removed. Some mods have uh, decided to remove those death animations because they look ugly for dwarfs and smaller units. Even for giant units that become smaller and they die like that. Glitched. Seers fighting the trolls here, troll spearmen, fracky troll spearmen. <clears throat> the other troops too. Including some really good troops. Yeah, I was really disappointed <coughs> that uh, the trades didn't work in the release. I thought I had uh, like a uh, fixed version that only that you know fixing all the issues of the 2021 release and improving it. But of course, the trades caused issues, and uh, because I didn't manage to move them over properly, and and uh, yeah, uh, 
the only way to solve a crash was to disable them entirely. Yeah, uh, you need to start all over using Trag's version. The only reason why I didn't do the, uh, make an article when I released can bring us victory from this disgrace. <coughs> okay, so the goblins will probably lose here. As the enemy has a numerical advantage, they will just send in more troops. They have an entire army in the city. If they enchant the Tiki warriors here, that fight to the death, they are really good. Elite infantry unit. Yeah, the trade collision, they are like <coughs> mostly goblins in this version, but in the next version you will have uh, access to the humans and the trolls and the ogres easier. The AI will also have more easy access to them because the only way the AI faction would get those units is if they took the right areas and then recruited them. <coughs> but in the future they will get them from their main areas. That's the trade collision. So you will not just fa face uh, goblins, you'll face humans too. And trolls and ogres will be more a diverse roster. Of course they still have all of these units, but they will have some other units too. That they might prefer over the goblins, like the human cavalry for example. The bandit raider cavalry will be fighting for the goblins. <coughs> from the get-go. So I sus suspect the AI will be able to recruit a lot of them. Steer cavalry. Goblins do not have a lot of cavalry. I believe that's the only normal cavalry that they have. Zoom out a little bit. So our army is still fighting. We still have a lot of troops here. We have a lot of trolls too. I wouldn't say that they are about to be defeated just yet. We have it 90, 98, 99, 100, 130. Okay, nah, they are far from defeated. We'll wait until they have a few troops left and we'll send in some rebels, I believe, from the Allied army. So we want to spend them first, actually, before spending the better troops. We had no choice but to spend the Rusayers here. They were the worst troops in, in the army that we are controlling from the beginning. Let's hope they do not send in better troops as replacements. If they send in the rabble, we'll send them into battle immediately, that's for sure. Trolls had a berserker unit. Blood drinkers. Be really dangerous. <coughs> I see it will massacre a lot of our infantry troops. Could speed up the battle. Maybe not. They are too numerous. We'll have second speed on. Lag and I have maximum speed. We'll have the middle option on. It's slightly faster now. Without any lag.
<clears throat> yeah, the trolls are way taller than the goblins. Now they showed up with a lot of troops here. Spearmen, they had four units of troll spearmen, I believe. They had only one of the Tiki warriors. Let's see what what will happen. If they will break. If they will win the first round. They are being reduced in numbers. I can see that. The troops have. Uh, 42, 42 and 48, so each unit has been lowered to more than half their original size. <coughs> They've been reduced more than half their units. The unit sizes. <coughs> anyway. Looks like the goblins will lose this fight. Crusaders have become really few in numbers. We got rid of some medium infantry here. That's fine. The course of this battle changes because defeat seems so it's not enough that they retreat. They need to actually, <coughs> they need to actually leave the battlefield. But if they fight to the death, then then it's fine. Then they will just die, and then then will be replaced by a different unit. But if they have to retreat after breaking. Then they need to leave the battlefield, too, which will take it some time. But I believe the many of the goblin units do not break in this version. So that's another change I want to do. That uh, only the undead should be unbreakable. Everyone else should have uh, like uh, the ability to be broken, except certain units like the Tiki Warriors, for example, and the zombies, the trolls, and some others should also have unbreakable morale. Maybe some elite units should have unbreakable morale too. Giants and such. We are losing here. We have been forced back to the wall here. Goblin Brasseas were not enough to win. They tried to send in reinforcements to replace them. Send in re replacements. Uh, so, by the way, I, I don't want to keep uh, Everlook uh, and Mad's Procket and Ratchet, you know, the other areas in Kalimdor that are separated by Night Elves and the Horde and such. We will move all the garrisons of those places and attack the Kiradje try to take out the Karaji before they become too strong. So we will send all those garrisons to the Karaji homeland and attack. Try to avoid the, our allies, the Horde, Terramore, and then the Night Elves. We will also avoid the Burning Legion. They are an enemy. Oh, our troops were crushed. They even sent in Champions bodyguard here. Okay. What about 
got the allied troops. They have started to move. Goblin rabble. Pirate musketeers. Certainly we'll use the Hobgoblin bodyguard. We only want to use the rabble out of those units. Would have wanted to use all the rabble troops. We can't decide which ones we get. We only get three units and we lose three units, but we can't decide which unit we get, unfortunately. So I think we'll send in the goblin infantry now. We cannot control which units we are reinforced by and uh, <coughs> that unit of rebel will be sent but it's far away. It's, uh, we, will s we will send in the heavy infantry too and, and most of them will, probably, probably all of them will be killed. That's fine. Then we get four more units of the other army. So we will be reinforced by burst troops. <coughs> At least the heavy infantry have shield wall formation. They should last longer. They should push the enemy forward in front of them. I believe they have not back to the shield wall. That's the first unit 66 of them. Should also defend better against the tower when they have shield wall. Here comes the other two units. 225, 225, and 225. So we have three fully sized units and one unit that was already used previously. It's fine. We also have the used up tinker, tinker unit. We'll send in the three tinkers too. These units got slaughtered, looks like. Slaughter the first unit pretty much. Need to slow, uh, slow down the game. It's too laggy. These units, sometimes when you have a fast forward on, the game lags more. Trying to push them forward with the shield wall formation here, while at the same time defending against ranged attacks. They are attacked from behind by the Thraki champions. This is what I wanted to look at. Battle outside, but it's not as much of a mess. So that's the Thraki bodyguard. Thraki champions. Still have Tiki Warriors. Okay, I don't really like the result of that battle. It looks like we are losing. We'll send in both units of Tinkers too. And we'll send the Rabble of course. Kill Chief Ukkors, the leader. That's good. He was somewhere here. He had a unique body, uh, model. I mean, his model. Unique general's model. But not the unique custom hero model. He 
would look different compared to the board guard, but wouldn't have a different model compared to other generals, I think. Oh, we are reinforced by the three Tinkers here. We also sent another unit of Tinkers, a fully sized unit of 62 of them. And in a future version we will give the Tinkers more numbers. I think they have too few numbers now. Should be more numerous. So yeah, the Goblins will be changed. They will have... Certain units will have more number numbers and they will have access to all their other races immediately. Uh, from all their areas, which will make them more f uh, fun, more balanced, not as bad in the early game and not as OP in the late game. I mean, uh, in the late game they have all their elite stuff and in the early game they have all their shit stuff, but uh, the medium stuff, the, the humans, the ogres and the trolls, they hardly get because they are not available in, in all their areas. So the medium stuff will be added from all their areas next release which will be good for the faction now we will need instead to take specific areas to get the humans and the trolls and such okay we seem to have won against the board guard We'll move into the city again. Tinkers and the Death Dealers have joined. It's good. They didn't have any mages, they can't destroy entire blobs of our troops here, which is also good. These are heavy infantry, the Goblin infantry is fighting at the front here. We'll zoom in on them fighting the enchanted ticky warriors of the frack trolls and probably the axe throwers I believe in melee kill the entire bodyguard of their leader frack champions bodyguard I don't know where their berserkers are they might show up and their scorpions we'll see they also had a bunch of uh, cavalry, I think, and ranged units, other than the axe throwers. Well, we might have needed uh, better troops here, against the trolls. Might be good to be reinforced by the worst troops here. We used to bet the troops first against the enemy. That way we have fewer losses, I believe. As these troops will do better against the trolls than others. And we have more troops left for the Karadji later. We'll send the, the armies of Everlook, Mads Prophet and Ratchet <coughs> against the Karadji and ignore any rebels in other areas. We'll just attack the Karadji get them out of the game. If they have too many armies, it's better to attack them immediately than to let them build up their troops. They, unlike other factions, they can recruit their troops super fast and can get huge numbers fast. Same with the Astral and Root faction. Those two factions have way faster recruitment than other factions. Oh, here we have a Death Stealer, female Death Stealer. Front. Some of the death dealers have reached the battle line. Oh, this guy got killed. Yeah, we needed to send in the death dealers. We had two units of them, two fully sized units, I believe. Needed some elite troops, not just our normal heavy infantry, which is not really elite troops. I believe they are still medium troops. But count as heavy infantry. Well the rogues, the death dealers, they are elite. Actually. 
Same with the Tinkers, but the Tinkers are so few that they hardly count in the battle. Yeah, the Death Stealers are really good. Charge with the <coughs> Goblin Infantry. Camera can be a little bit hard moving sometimes. Hard to move. Right, so we played about an hour now. Almost an hour. I am not against playing for two hours. Maybe three, but at least two. I plan on playing two hours at least. In this mod. Uh, with the goblins. Then we'll play the. Blood Elf and Naga hot seat campaign again. We will continue with the Naga and fight the Battle of Suldasar against the Sandalari Troll rebels in minor faction. And after that, we might continue and play li a little bit with the Blood Elves in the same campaign. As it's a hot seat campaign where I play both factions and then return to the Night Elves, that are really po uh, popular actually. I used to like the Blood Elves. If I update the mod, I might replay every single one of that version. To be honest, I haven't gotten that far into this campaign anyway. I almost feel like updating and fixing the traits and all that, and then restart the campaigns again. It will take a while to, to re replay everything with the Naga and the Blood Elves again, because that's 35 turns. But with the other factions, like the Goblins and the Night Elves, it will take like 5 hours to replay the Goblin stuff and maybe three hours or four to replay the, the night elf stuff so that's not a problem the night elven stuff I mean. okay but with the naga and blood elves we need to replay a little bit more okay it seems that we have won here they have more troops over here we will move the infantry into one group. Rebel is still, still on their way. See. Now we will charge the enemy. Infantry are inside of the walls. Attack their century nomad hunters, javelin throwers, but they are also axemen in battle. Shouldn't be that good in melee. So they are a ranged unit, we should easily kill them. They're death stealers, the goblins, and even the others, the goblin infantry. Yeah, so the trade collision is more like the goblin faction in this version. It'll be more of a mixed race faction later. We might remove their unique troops from the Markner roster too. Not all of them, maybe. I think the pirates will be kept as Markneries, but I mean the, the bandit raiders and the bandits might be goblin unique. Maybe I'll keep them. 
marks. I don't know. We'll see. Hunters, they sucked. Oh, the trolls, the troll, the troops on the walls too. Sans your axe throwers on the walls there. Might throw axes down on us, they are doing it actually. We won't place anyone in loose formation. Maybe we should place the goblin death stealers in loose formation. And the tinkers. The goblin infantry. Uh, they are in shield wall formations, they put, are protected better using the formation than if they were wear in loose formation. They are killing some of our troops from the walls, these axe throwers. Oh, they killed this death stealer too. They are focusing on, on a male death stealer. Then they have spearmen over here. Many have we left to kill? We have a few left to kill. Let's attack the spearmen too. Send in the new unit of rebels too. Lost a lot of troops here and killed a lot of enemy troops as well. Almost all the tinkers and death dealers are still alive. So we lost most of the goblin infantry, I think. 21, 3, 16. Yeah, we've lost most of them. We have one unit with 84. The others have mostly been spent. Here we have more enemies, including these dangerous scorpions. They are really, really dangerous, as we saw in the other episode. They have their elite rogues, they are similar to the Death Stealers, but the Faraki version of them. Shadow Blades, Faraki Shadow Blades, they have also champions there, and more spearmen. Quite a few spearmen and Shadow Blades. And the Blood Drinkers somewhere too. Because defeat seems almost certain. I can say that our infantry won't be able to win. Need to send in other troops. One of the death dealers is fighting alone over there against quite a few. She died. <coughs> All right. <coughs> So we are sending in two units of rabble, they will be easily killed by the enemy. They are really shitty troops. I like the heavy infantry with the helmet, it looks kinda cool. That one died. They remind me a bit of Romans. We have some tinkers too. They stretch a bit, unfortunately. Otherwise they look cool with their robotic arms. Yeah, I was really disappointed at the release of 
July 2022, I believe, that it had issues with traits. I didn't bother to do the article. <clears throat> but yeah, we, we might, I might actually make the update on Trugs version very soon. And then restart these campaigns in that version. The Nagan Blood Elves, yeah, I think we'll re restart all of them if we finish it there. Because I want traits in the game that work. I want the uh, same version but with working traits pretty much. It's a bit annoying to redo the stuff I did because I don't remember everything. I wrote about most of it but I probably forgot to mention something. You know, I, I try to remember everything I did but... I always end up doing more than I plan on doing, so I might not re remember exactly 100% of my changes. Might have done something that, it, that I didn't write down. But I remember most of it. Also, there are some additional changes I want to do now. I will always get the will to do changes to mods when I play them. You know, you play them and you find bugs, or you play them and you find things you want to improve. One thing I needed to do was add a sword to the around the hero, but another thing I need to do is limit the druids of the talon and druids of the claw. They do not have unlimited ammo anymore, because so that's OP, overpowered. <clears throat> of course, uh, there may be other mages too, I don't know, most of the mages have been nerfed, there might be one or two others that aren't nerfed, will nerf all the mages, yes, they, so all of them have limited ammo, because one mage shouldn't be, one mage unit shouldn't be able to kill an entire army, they should be very powerful, but they should have limited ammunition, so that you are forced to use other units too, otherwise, what's the point of having an army? If, if one unit of mages can kill everyone, then, then it's a matter of just recruiting the mage. And because this is a strategy game we want, <coughs> or I want, uh, the, 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 the army to actually be needed in the game. Mage shouldn't be the only thing that you need in order to win. You should need the mage and other troops. The mage should be a very powerful unit that you can use certain situations but <coughs> with the limited ammo it should prevent the mage from winning the battle on its own. The mage unit, you know, like 20 mages shouldn't be able to win on its own against 2000 troops or 3000 troops or 4000 troops. <coughs> Killed with that animation again. Human death animation. This guy got killed too. I think we have lost most of the infantry now. Mostly the tinkers left. We will be reinforced by the worst infantry in the army. Rebels very soon. Only four Death Stealers remaining. One Tinker and yeah, looking, it's looking like we are losing this battle. Death Stealers fled. They don't have un unbreakable morale. I None of them will keep their unbreakable morale. I will remove, uh, remove it for most of the units. I believe a lot of units have unbreakable morale that shouldn't have it. Because as I said previously in the other video that I used to not like when, when units routed and they had a lot of numbers still remaining. So I preferred battles where they fought to the death, but I kind of want undead to have that as their speci specialty. So only very few units should have that of other factions like elite units. Not all elite units too. Oh, the Frack Shadow Blade should, should appear the rogues of the Frack Trolls. That's why we lost. Is 
still send in these guys, the rabble. Then we have another unit of rabble that we want to send in. Join the battle. Cannon can't do anything more. They don't need 27 rabble to fight. Send in the rabble next. Track trolls are celebrating. Stay won. Killed everyone or scared them away. How many have we killed? We have killed 38% of the Fracky army. They will kill 29% of our total numbers. Which means that we have, uh, we have lost twice that out of one army. So we have lost about 58% of one army. Here comes the rabble. They are numerous, numerous, but really bad. They will be killed too. I, I want them to attack the spearmen. Send for no more spearmen, not the shadow blades. Spearmen they can probably win against due to their numbers. They were very few. Only nine spearmen remaining. The trolls. The rabble have swords and then they have axes. Some of them have swords and some of them have axes. They have no shields. Really bad stats, but they are numerous. They would be good against the Kiraji, I believe. At least the worst Kiraji units. They have similar numbers, similar stats. I already removed the unbreakable morale of the Karaji units. Didn't make sense that they would fight to the death. doesn't look good. Smaller units. We have the same issue in Hyrule to the War and in other mods. Right. I think we have won against the Troll Spearmen now. They sent in their elite unit now. That might make our units rout sooner or later. No, they won't rout. They have unbreakable morale. A later version, these guys will rout. All they will be even worse. By the Almighty Lord, or a military genius. Those are the shadow blades. They have a unique animation too, where they jump around and such. From Warhammer, beginning of the end times. Really cool animation. Recently, the goblin destillers do not have that animation, it's because they were too small. So it didn't fit them, but all the normal, like, rogues have it. Unit. 
I think they even broke, so they can break actually. I think they fought to the death in the previous battle, but they can break. Okay. Entire unit there broke. Another one is coming over here. They are 150 in a unit. Then we have another one over here, they were very far away. Another unit of 150 of them. I don't want to send in the bodyguard. Maybe I will send in the bodyguard of the actual hero. Because that bodyguard is actually without the general, so it might actually be worth it. The general won't be killed by sending in that unit. Alright, we'll send in the hobgoblins against the shadow blades. Only intervention by the Almighty Lord or a military genius can bring us victory from this disgrace. I mean, if they have the 111 of these guys, this is 125 shadow blades and 111, they have two units of them. Then they have the Frag Champions too, yeah we needed to send in the Hobgoblins. Their tower is also firing at us. That's why I placed the Hobgoblins in loose formation. What the fuck is this? The blood Drinkers. Their Berserkers. They moved all the way out of the city. That's dangerous. So they might actually be a danger to the general. These berserkers. I pray the course of this battle changes because defeat seems almost certain. We'll send this unit over here instead and fight their blood drinkers. Because they might defeat the hobgoblins and run for the general next. Hubgoblins are not that numerous. They are pretty good. Uh, three hit points and such. Yeah. I think they will lose. So needed to add some numbers here. The reason the battle is a bit laggy is because we have so many armies. We have this army outside, uh, when, when an army is outside of the playable area, I believe that the game lags more. When everyone is inside, uh, the lagging usually stops. So, might be because of that. Okay, seems we lost the entire unit. They will probably kill the rabble too. That's bad. They will kill the general. Fuck that. Our general lies slain upon the battlefield. We failed at protecting the general. Those guys came from nowhere and uh, they killed our bodyguard and they killed. They killed um, the goblin rabble. And then they killed the general because they attack automatically with their berserks. They run to the nearest enemy and kill him. They attack the general automatically. So I ordered the gunners to take care of them. I 
it was too late. These are the Iraqi blood drinkers. 16 attack, 2 charge bonus, 10 def uh, defense, 2 hit points, a lot of good stuff here, including can go berserk, which makes them heroic. We are throwing dynamites at them now. And fire fry firing at them too. Yeah, they are being incinerated. I don't like that they kill the general. They ruin the role play of the battle. Now I can't use the general when entering the city. Also firing at them. Some of our gunners join the melee. Ah, a unit of 36 tail gunners. It's fine. They were firing, but they're forced into melee. We have the pirate musketeers too, firing at them. We are prepared for them when they attack our lines. Fortunately, too late for the hero. Only intervention by the Almighty Lord or a military genius can bring us victory from this disgrace. Okay, this rebel unit will also be used. And that one. They don't really want the rebel to attack those guys right now. Maybe we do. Don't matter. It doesn't matter if they get incinerated together with them. They are very bad. We have one now. Uh, our dynamite throwers kill a lot of the berserkers. Good job, soldiers. They they kill a lot of their troops. These guys. They were really effective. Defending against those guys. Okay. The rabble. The one group. Attack the shadow blades. We'll send in the rabble first. They will be slaughtered, of course. The other general could move over here. They lost their most dangerous unit except the scorpions. Uh, okay, but the general died, so now I can't enter the city. And third person. That sucks. I wanted to walk around in a city in third person, you know. Alright. Shouldn't have had a general there, I should have had a general over here somewhere. But even so, the Faraki trolls did manage to reach that area too. Here we have some musketeers. Pirate musketeers. And a bodyguard. Some tail gunners. They also have some rebels over there, at least one unit of rebels. Then we have some other troops, tail gunners. all the rebels will be killed. Cancelled in these pirate musketeers, they are very few. I 
Anyone that has few units left should be sent in. Eight tail gunners descent. So the tail gunners are more numerous than the the others. Five can send them to you. Alright, these guys will reach the enemy soon. Loose formation would be good. Prevent the tower from killing them. Then this unit. And this unit. All of them will be loose formation. And the whole have goblin bodyguard. lagging behind fight too, they have two units. But it's worth it, getting rid of the rabble. And we don't have to recruit Only new rabble later. Almighty Lord, or a military genius can bring us victory from this disgrace. They are some of the worst teams in the game. They might be better than the goblins, but I think they I mean the Marlocks, but might be Worse. Maybe the zombies are even worse than these guys. Yeah, they are being slaughtered. We'll certainly lose. Oh, we've got a tail gunner here too. Did any damage on the shadow blades? That's an elite unit, so like an elite versus one of the worst units in the game. The numbers won't make a difference against the shadow blades, I believe. They will just be slaughtered. You're adding more bodies to the battlefield. Okay, that's fine. One or two heavy numbers, after all. Yeah, we will send the armies of the other three areas in Kalimdor straight to the Kiraji. So we leave one unit, I believe, for Abel in each territory. And the rest will be sent to the Kiraji. We have three armies then. Ready to fight the Kiraji. Just need to avoid any other faction on the way there. Camera zoomed out of one of these units that were outside of the walls, but it's the same unit. They're just very. <coughs> what should I say? Separated. Even in tight formation. Now they broke, I believe. Yeah. Over 30 of them broke, but they faced an elite unit, so they broke earlier against that unit. The previous battle, they didn't even break. So maybe against certain troops like normal troll spears, they do not break as easily as against an elite unit. These guys are not 
doing a good job firing at the enemy. We'll try to run into the city and position ourselves. In the worst case, we'll fight in melee. We have 69 of them. We want them to run, of course. We'll probably start running soon. Tail gunners. We would prefer if they used their guns. They do no good outside of the walls. We need them inside. Yeah, the towers are taking out quite a few. These guys are not as good in melee as the pirate musketeers. Can still fight in melee. We'll try to avoid it, but in the worst case they will be slaughtered. It will be used as bad infantry. <coughs> they were already spent to some degree. I wanted to get rid of any unit that had losses anyway. Good. Raki's yes, shadow blades didn't charge. Now you can fire at the shadow blades, I believe. Good. That's exactly what we should do. Five tail gunners should start firing. Hey, I did a mistake not killing them off before they positioned themselves. Now we can kill them from afar. Can't take out the shadow blades with the tail gunners. There is no unit in the game that can resist guns, not even giants. Some of the units have better resistance against them, but they still die after a few shots. They might take a few more bullets before dying, but no unit is immortal against gunners and, and missile units. For some reason they are not charging. This is good for us. Sometimes the AI is stupid and doesn't charge. Which enables our gunners to just shoot them where they are. You do not need to waste infantry on them. They will probably win against the rabble anyway that we are sending there. We were sending at least one unit of rabble. They are over there. They will be killed. Better to use the gunners. Good. The numbers have dwindled. You wouldn't have been able to kill them in melee, I believe. Very, very good that they, for some reason, do not charge. They are sitting ducks. A little bit boring, I mean. mean but yeah, it's good for the battle. For our side. We have some on the walls, too. We've almost taken out this entire unit. Two units left, I believe. Unit Rabble, Goblin Rabble. Is 
and this rabble up the wall to fight the other shadow blades there. You'll be slaughtered, of course. And I do have 59, so he lost a few to the tower, I believe. Do I even have any cavalry? I don't know. They have like scorpion of course, but do they have any raptors? I don't think so. Here they have spearmen and uh, champions. They have some good infantry here too. Here they have axe throwers. And the Shadow Blades. I guess the extras could kill our troops too. If I need uh, they kill the general, not good. If that's the leader of our faction, then we will we might lose actually the campaign if we lose the leader and the heir. I don't know if this is the heir. If both die, we might lose the campaign. Then I would need to reload. But if I won the battle, I would just auto win it. You know. Don't want to replay it. Uh, but uh, we'll see. I don't want to send the bodyguard. Because there is a chance that attack the extras instead with the rabble because they will be slaughtered by the shadow blades otherwise and I do have 150 Oof. killed by the tower here from both sides. If you look at losses, we have killed 48% of the frag trolls. They have killed 36% of both our armies. Means, means they have killed about 70-82% of one army. I don't know why they're standing there. Should move in. The troops. Ah, here we have more troops. Let's attack the spearmen. here. I will start on the win. I have a full sized unit. There are no more numerous than our troops. And our troops I are worse. The course of this battle changes because defeat seems almost certain. Yeah, I think the, the, the slight lag is because the not all of the allied army had joined the battlefield. How many do we have? 85. This guy will also die, of course. Surrounded the enemies. Another dude here. Okay, so that's 6. Yeah, they will win. Kill all the rabble. Might even kill the 
tail gunners. Air force in the melee. F sixty nine rebel left. The tail gunners they have swords in melee. They were better than I thought. They have large knives, I believe. They are kind of very, very large knives. Or a sword. I don't know, I think it's a large knife. Or it's a goblin sized sword. Send in these guys then. Send them there. Then we'll fire on the enemy. <coughs> so I have 17 pirate musketeers here. Okay, lost a few to the tower. Let's kill them now. In this spot. Muskets. All right, camera zooms in on there. Projectile. Troll spearman almost moved out. the old we'll send it in again will be used to kill will be killed off there and I have 91 we'll send them in too we want all the rebel to be sacrificed Again, they stopped firing for some reason. 
<coughs> they should fire until they run out of ammo, then they should charge. I don't care if this unit is bad. They are too few to be worth it to keep. <coughs> oh, here are the rebels, 49 of them. They will probably break very soon. It's the same unit that retreated previously. Sometimes they return if they are too numerous. They find their courage again. They are too few, they won't return, then they will leave the battlefield. Ah, they broke already. Probably now they will uh, leave the battlefield because rabble units, they usually <coughs> leave the battlefield. All the units leave the battlefield after they have broken a second time, I believe. This was the second time this unit broke. They will continue to fire and reload their guns. I mean, rifles. The other guys had guns, these guys have rifles. This is the general. Tinker general died. Javelin hill gunners have left the battlefield. 41 units are they can be used again. We will send them in again then. Anyway, <coughs> so there will be cannon fodder against trolls here. They're very numerous. I don't like the flickering of this battle. I need to tab out and see if there are some programs running. It causes the game to be slower or something. Yeah, these guys have bigger swords, like Aladdin style swords. Yeah, they've broke, they were too few. They do much of a difference. I pray Most the of them died, the yeah. changes because defeat seems almost certain. These guys also broke. Okay. We have another unit of rabble over here. It's only 91, it's been in battle previously. They will also be defeated. Okay, so then we have, uh, we have the Gob Goblin Shredders. Elite infantry unit. They didn't really want to use goblins. Mounted on top of giant mechs. Mechanical forms or suits. Okay. The goblin mechs pretty much. Goblin shredders. Okay. Might have to use the unit. Maybe we can use the dynamite throwers first and throw dynamites over the walls. We'll use the rebel too. Oh, 
pull the troops to enter. No, there's still one unit over here. Goblin Artificer. Elite range unit. As long as it's outside, I believe the game will continue to flicker. I think that's the reason. Could be wrong, of course. These troops could... Uh, All of these troops could move to this area. And run. Here's still alive. We'll show it again. Dorker and dwarf. Casmode and dwarf and a goblin. Just the enemy. Yeah, he was killed too. Alright, then they will send in the artificers. I believe. Should have started to move now, yeah. The only unit left there, the others have been order to move to the position of the other troops these are the goblin shredders really good heavy infantry of the goblins Send in attack charge bonus 10 18 total defense and 5 hit points and a good, good lot of good stuff here too Good abilities. But they are not very numerous. I believe they have the same stats as the gnome mix of the dwarves. So here is the. Ah, the. These guys are still on their way. Fast forward. Oh, they pass a bunch of tail gunners here. Want to speed up the game a little bit? We played for about two hours now, and have not even finished this battle. This video can become like three hours or something, two and a half hours at least. <coughs> we'll see. Clock is seven in the morning on Wednesday, I believe. Could be wrong. Might be Thursday. I don't know. I think it's Wednesday. Almost at the gate now. And they're still 91. The tower will start to fire soon and kill some of them. Yeah, one killed. The artificer is almost inside of the battlefield arena now. <coughs> I believe they walk, that's why it takes a long. Especially a unit of zombies would take forever. Ah, they reached the enemy. 
You put normal speed on again. Of course they will kill the goblin rabble. That's very good. Then we get rid of the troops. We do not want anyway. Intervention by the Almighty Lord. Already broke. The military genius can bring us victory from this disgrace. Despite having like half the units still alive. The two of them broke. 45 are remaining now. They are really bad units. Trolls moved out. Here are the new troops. Artificer, elite, gunners, snipers. These guys, 15 missile attack, 6 normal attack, melee attack. Total defense, 13, 1 hit points, but they have like. <coughs> um, let's see, effective against armor, they penetrate armor, of course. Combat boons and snow, boons of snow, long range missiles, excellent morale. They have really long range missiles and they are gunners they are uh, actually really effective gunners they are similar to mage in effectiveness then we have these guys the rockets goblin rockets they are cavalry they are also good they throw dynamites so like dynamite throwers mounted on rockets or miss melee attack they are really bad in melee missile attack 12 17 total defense 4 hit points Eagle inspires nearby troops, they inspire troops if they are nearby, other troops can uh, form shooting circle, excellent morale, can't hide, good stem, uh, fast moving, they are really fast moving these guys. They do not have fast speed on either, still they are this fast. Okay, we can attack these troops, we'll have shooting circle on, which will be used with these units, and we'll uh, fly around in a circle when they reach the, the area where the enemy is, so they will run around in a circle, fly around in a circle and fire the enemy, and move away when they get close, otherwise they'll end up in a melee. They are really fast. The fastest cavalry in the game. Really bad in melee. Should be used to harass enemies. And fly away and then harass the enemies even more. They are harassing cavalry. <coughs> and they are an elite unit of course. One of the better units. The goblins. Of course, I didn't want them to be there in the lee. This is how they're supposed to be used. They should use their shooting circle and then they should just fly around in a circle and fire their bombs at the enemy. Throw dynamites at the enemy. And this circle and shoot formation is really effective. It allows them to also fly away. And the enemy gets close. Because when you fire at the enemy they will sometimes charge and then this formation will allow them to fly away so they won't end up in a melee and get themselves killed. Of course there is like an issue with the animation there but that's because the rider is, well, 
rather on top of a bed mount. It's like the unit is <coughs> a very special unit. So the mount, like uh, similar to when they ride the dragon, that sometimes they end up not in the saddle because of, uh, because of the unit type. It's weird, but. Anyway, they are very fast. The goblin rockets, but not very numerous. They managed to scare away the trolls. I believe they have no ammunition left now. We don't want to use them in melee. I think. Poor melee attack, that's really bad. They can continue to play around in a circle like that. For some reason this battle was a little bit of a lag fest, even when they entered the battlefield. Maybe there were too many units and the, the city is the largest type of city to him. So. Mm -hmm. I remember playing the same, I know it was a large town. When I played the Faraki, a large city I mean, now it's a huge city. We have more troops now, we have two armies instead of, uh, two attacking armies and one defensive army, instead of like one attacking army and one defensive. Okay. I think we have no choice, we will send in the any infantry that we still have. We will send in the 28 rabble first. Then we'll send in the goblin shredders too. We've already reached this area. Yeah, it sucked that the general died and it also sucks that it's kind of like this battle. Want to control all armies the next time? I believe that's the reason it lagged a bit. If I had let the other army be AI controlled, it wouldn't have lagged, I'm pretty sure. But on the other hand, then the general would have gotten himself killed. That general, too. So we need to not have generals in the second army when attacking walls. Prevent the AI from suiciding the general. Now I su succeeded in. Kind of suiciding my own general. Okay, the, the shredders have almost reached the area. The enemy. Okay, we have normal speed on now. Shredders will win against the troll spears. Even if they have more than one unit, we should be able to win. 97 troll spearmen here. And then they have an additional 158 there. The shredders can also <coughs> move up walls. Despite them being far too small for the little gatehouse there the door or entrance right there yeah the shredders are really good they should be able to win against the troll spearmen the balance of power, we have killed 54% of the enemy and lost 40% of our two armies. They might actually win. We'll see. 
he can't properly utilize our ranged troops. Maybe if I had uh, let them sally out, then they would have moved out of the settlement and we could have used the guns. Maybe that would have been better. We would have had a large battle outside of the city instead, and then been reinforced by the other army. Then we needed to wait for them to sally out, which would probably take a while for them to do. If we lose the battle, I might save off the battle and then try again and let them sally out. We'll see. Might go better. Then we can use all our gunners against the trolls. Attack the settlement. The problem is that we kind of couldn't use the gunners. I think we have won against one of the troll spearmen units and are fighting the second one now. out some of the shadow blades. In the end I think they will win because we do not have enough of the shredders. We only had one unit of them. And they can only be recruited from undermine currently. Only settlement that is higher than a large town. It's a large city I believe. All the other areas of the goblins are large towns. Thraki has moved out a lot of the shadow blades. Elite infantry there. I think they will win due to their numbers. But they might kill off their troll spearmen at least. And a few of their shadow blades. by the almighty lord or a military genius can bring us victory from this disgrace a mess when we zoom in on the unit I think having them sally out would be better because each turn we wait on them to sally out they will be weaker. They would not have a fully sized army when they sally out, it would be much weaker and we would be able to utilize our gunners, the best units of the goblin army. If we win anyway we will, I think we will try to win with this battle anyway but if we lose the battle I might try to replay by having them sally out. And then the second army will be used to reinforce immediately. We've almost lost the shredders now. Kill a lot of enemies but not enough. We're too numerous. So I had to waste them. Shall I have no choice but to send in 
bodyguard general second general with his bodyguard to fight their infantry he has a good infantry bodyguard only one shredder alive now he died lost an elite unit there won't be easily replenished in the early game only undermines we need to, to recruit him in the unit in undermine and then we need to move a fleet from there to Kalimdor it will take a few turns goblins celebrated their victory there against the shredders we are sending in a unit of hobgoblins but they are only 78 not that numerous Ishvit sending in this unit is that he might die, the general might die, we'll see. <laughs> but I suspect that this battle will have to be retconned anyway. kind of want them to sally out so we can kill them on the battlefield I realize that the goblins are not suited for fighting siege battles against the trolls if they do not have very good infantry so they can't really fight well without their ranged units what are they doing? moved over there they should attack here zoomed in on the general but you cannot control him because it's the second general you can never control the second general the third person mod only the first one we have from the beginning oh they have troops from behind too that's why they moved over there they are not very numerous so they might be in general kill that troll at least try to get to the general don't like that they attack from two sides it's a tight formation tighten the formation the general is better protected killed another troll there So the battle took over two hours. They have literally done nothing but play this battle. If we win it will still save the game after the battle. Then I will try to reload it probably. And uh, attempt to fight it on the battlefield instead. Because we get to sit there anyway if we win. Maybe we won't lose the general then. We will have an epic battlefield battle instead. The 54 of the bodyguards remaining now. Good. I don't like that the general is kind of on his own here. Need to send the Pray troops the there. Of this battle changes because defeat seems almost certain. Uh, the general might die. We'll see. Kill them. Kill the general, but he will probably die. We'll see. The bodyguard is in tight formation, and we order them to attack the same unit. They are not fighting the wrong. 
Ah, oh, fuck, the general died. We must help his men avenge Cameron zoomed in on the hobgoblins instead. They are pretty big. I have nine remaining. Uh, this battle wasn't very fun because of the slight lag there. The goblins simply weren't suited to fight it. <coughs> so yeah, you might retcon the entire episode. <laughs> At least you got to enjoy a battle of Sulfurag. Because the, the retcon version won't have a battle of Sulfurag. Instead, we will have a battle outside of Sulfurag. Against Vika Troll garrisons. I believe if we wait until their last turn before the settlement gives up, they will either give up or, or they will sally out and be way weaker. They won this battle. We still have some troops, but only ranged troops or uh, cavalry. I know what we need to do. We need to tr uh, place the dynamite throwers over there. They should be in loose formation. We'll throw dynamites over the walls. It's my idea. The X throwers there. Maybe they shouldn't be that close then. Just let them attack whenever they are close. These guys will also attack when they are close. <coughs> the, sap the sappers. Sixty-eight of them in this unit. I believe both of them have. Six. No, the other one has seventy-five. This one lost a few in his previous battle, I believe. It's good that we lost all the rabble. <coughs> yeah, uh, without a range unit we can't really win, I believe. You have to either use them as melee troops or abandon the siege. We'll use the dynamite throwers, the sappers first. And then we will charge with the range units in melee. played over two hours now in the same battle. Didn't plan on that, I thought we would win way sooner. Now we might even win, we might lose. <laughs> Let's see. Early Goblin army is pretty weak, despite the addition of some melee troops. Okay, now they are firing their dynamites. Good. Camera zoomed in on them, so I had to move out of that view. These guys will also fire on their units. Good, they can throw dynamites on the walls. They are really effective against troops on the walls. If they incinerate the enemy there. Continue to fire. The enemy has been killed. The other unit is firing on these guys. If they run out of ammo, we will retreat with them. Uh, 
Uh, they are out of ammo already. Then we will retreat with this unit. And this unit too. They do not have any ammo anymore. I believe they have not enough ammo. Did some good, but yeah, they might need more ammo. I don't know. <laughs> or maybe not. Maybe they can't carry too many dynamites. They can't just defeat it. These guys could also retreat. Don't want to spam the unit in Lee. I lost a few to the tower. Didn't realize that. These guys will retreat. Might restore some of them after the battle then. I think we will use the tail gunners and the dwarves in melee. Have no choice. All of these guys in loose formation to prevent the towers from killing them. Okay, we have a tail gunner unit here too. Could we move into that unit? Me and that group. Okay, we'll send all of these into melee. It sucks that we need to use them in melee, but we'll do it. We won't use the Goblin Artificer in melee, too. they are too valuable. Yeah, these guys are numerous. We might lose, we'll see. They are not the best in melee. Shadow blades. Scorpions are still alive. Fast forward. Now normal speed on. Draw their swords. Have the melee. Troops, the, the best medium. So you lose a lot of them.
didn't like all the flickering in this battle. Kind of ruined it to some degree. It stops when I have the camera pointed at certain directions. Yeah. I'm not used to that issue. The game. Let's pause the game and pause the recording. Okay, I'm back. There were no programs I could shut down or web browser or anything, so <coughs> I guess it's just bad luck. Maybe because we control both armies. Should avoid that in the future. Could probably win thanks to our numbers. We'll see. Gonna kill quite a few of our gunners too. This is still the Battle of Sulfurak, but we will probably retcon it and try to fight the battle outside of the city instead. It will end in a much better result. We might still lose the battle, but at least our gunners will not be melee cannon fodder. So this is why we want the human bandits, because they are better than our own cavalry infantry. We want the human raiders. Some ogres and such. of the shadow blades same that the blood shades are using for the blood elves Almost entered with all the troops. Then I have a camera towards this uh, area. We, we get rid of the fl flickering. It, if it's, I believe it could be the sunlight. Usually, when we fight in darker areas, the flickering is removed or reduced. It could be the sunlight that is causing the good weather. Shadow Blades are really good. They killed a lot of our troops. They might win. We kill 75%, they kill 54% of our, our armies.
least according to the balance of power meter, we are losing. If I retcon this episode, I will do the next part immediately after this one. If I do not retcon it, we will do the Naga next, and the Blood Elves, and then the Night Elves. But I might also do some historical titles like Wrath of the Norseman of the Bellamundi. flickering when we have the camera pointed this way. But when we have it pointed towards the light, then we get flickering. So yeah, the light is affecting uh, the, fl the flickering or the lag. So we'll avoid this sunlight in the future. If the desert we prefer if it's a more shadowy battlefield. I believe I fought a battle in the desert that we have good weather, so it might just be the fact we are playing on a huge settle custom settlement. Huge custom settlement. So I'm getting the wrong units there. If we lost both generals in the battle. So we have almost won against the Shadow Blades now. Yeah, as long as we point the camera towards the shadows, flickering is removed. It's certainly the light. I think we'll win against these guys. They have a few more units, including the scorpions. We're unlucky we'll lose against the scorpions, we'll see. We start to fire, I think. Gunshots. Hopefully we can use guns against scorpions. And we'll kill these guys. We have lost half of our men. I have no choice but to use them in melee. Against their infantry. I have no position to fire from. I have a few more units here. Including frag champions and Nomad Spearman and the unit on the walls, probably. Yeah, axe throwers, the walls. I don't believe we can fire guns like over walls. They have more shadow blades there. The one against the ones here. Kill the last one there. Good job, soldiers. They are not defeated. Seem to be firing. Maybe we can fire it then. We use the guns against those guys. Or against the shadow blades actually. That'd be better. Maybe they can fire up 
four walls. But not all of them are fire. All of them seem to be firing now. Some of the units have their swords drawn. I don't know. Kill the scorpions. Moving out the scorpions. Need to kill them. Probably too late to kill the scorpions. Maybe some of them will fire too. The scorpions have uh, like some abilities, for example, have a special ability, bonus fighting cavalry. Combat bonus in woods, right to nearby enemy, and uh, excellent morale, can't hide, good stamina, I will change that. They are supposed to be able to hide, because you see they move down on the ground and such and throw up. So, can move down and up, so should be able to hide, I believe, despite being huge. Need the yarners to fire on top uh, on against them. Or fight them in melee. Let's use the artificers too. Against the scorpions. Looks formation. We only have 60 of them. These are the snipers. Their best gunners in the game. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the light. I believe that goes to Scorpions in Lee. At least the uh, Goblin Infantry could do it. We'll see. So by clicking on the flag, we automatically attack the unit. If it's difficult to click on the unit, just click on the flag on top of the unit to attack it. Ah, the artificers were far away on the other side. They're over there. This battle might take. Three hours. Started like two and a half hours ago, more. Two hours, forty minutes ago. It's a very long video. For a lo very long bath. It might not even be in it. Okay, 77% enemies killed, 60% allies killed. They had one army at the start, we had one, uh, two armies at the start. Yeah, I think we retcon this, despite the length of the video. I'm tired of this battle. Just charge towards the plaza. Yeah, 
have been quite a few losses here. Many troops managed to pass the scorpions. When we enter the plaza, we will have to wait 20 minutes and the scorpions might return there. Or other units. If we hold it for 20 minutes without the enemy retaking it, we will win. Speed on, fast forward on. Our army yeah, it doesn't tired. flicker or lag when we are in the shadows. So we don't want sunlight when we fight on, on this settlement type. My lord! Our men have taken control of the city! Only ah, scorpions return. A military genius can bring us victory from this disgrace. Let's try to kill them with our ranged units. We just allow them to fire the wheel. Trolls are also coming from the walls. Kind of like the musketeer unit. I like that they have a mix between goblins and dwarves here. Both types of dwarves. And the shadow blades too down from the walls. At least they can use their guns here. Our troops. Place them on fire to wheel. We'll do better that way. Fire it anyone that they can fire it. And not waste any chances that we can kill again. Kill the units there, pretty much. Here we have a few more. Guns drawn, really nice. Should they move them there faster? I think we killed the scorpions. Yes, good, uh, a good job. Our gunners could easily kill the scorpions from, from a distance. They were really, really difficult in the They must, must have shot them down. But the frack isn't in the champions. The troll spearman. The plaza. Here we have some tail gunners firing too. More. Only half the enemy force remains. Finally, they could use their guns, but they do not have the numbers we would have wanted. Only a very, very few numbers now after all those melee battles. Firing at both sides here, both directions. These guys were forced into melee. The trolls charged. Due to them having shadow blades, I believe our troops will lose. Yeah, they broke. You might 
might lose the battle. We underestimated the trolls at their capital. We thought that two armies of goblins would be able to handle one army in the, in the capital, but it might have been wrong. We couldn't utilize our range units properly. The musketeers have broken. I believe we are out of mercenaries now. Yeah, all the mercenaries have been defeated. Tail gunners inside the plus are still firing, but the others broke. We killed most of their troops here. Good. Most of the troll spearmen at least. But also quite a few of the at least half of the Iraqi champions have been killed. Suspect they will be forced into melee soon. They are firing at the trolls that charged. Good, the extra is there. Alright, we have the elite unit still too. Yeah, they are really good when they can fire the enemy. But the problem was that we didn't get to fire at most troops in this battle. It's very hard to fire into the city when they have no walls. But when we're inside we can use them. We just had to waste a lot of units before we got inside. Now they broke. Fuck. We'll be killed as they try to flee. Most of them will be killed. Looks like the threat was will win. We took out all the scorpions here. I pray the course of this battle changes because defeat seems almost certain. Yeah, only 14 remaining. The tail gunners here. They are being killed by the extras now. Seven remaining. Still killed quite a few here. But especially here. Look at this. One unit of tail gunners killed all of this. Maybe there were more that killed the scorpions, but one unit killed all the champions, I think. Okay. We have the massacre here. The problem was that we couldn't use the gunners. The walls were in the way. I don't know where the elite unit is. Here. Need them to enter the city. I will have fast forward on. It's the only unit left. They are really good. You just need them into the city and Maybe they can fire at the enemy and kill them. We'll see. Unit rats, goblin tail gunners. 91% enemies killed, 67% of our troops killed. We only have one unit. Yeah. We'll have more losses when they have left the battlefield. They are routing. Oh, they are fucking moving out. Didn't realize. Cost the game, Jesus Christ. Couldn't click on the unit for some reason.
this or the goblin artificers will lose the battle if they reach us with their infantry. But if we can fire on them, we might be able to win. We'll see. It will happen. We can see the banner over there. I don't really like that they haven't started to fire. Fire as soon as possible, Jesus Christ. Okay. Yeah, they are really good projectile. Fuck, they are upon them. Killed most of the shadow blades there. Have sent their entire army after us. Yeah, I didn't like the <coughs> battle map. With all the flickering. These shadow blades are pretty fast too. Troops are forced into melee. Not good. I think you will have to retreat to save the unit. It's an elite unit. You don't want them to be killed. They were really effective from afar, but can't fight in melee. So we'll try to retreat, but their units are faster. They might kill us. We've seen. They have 29 remaining. We have 33. And we have the other trolls too. Axe throwers. And the war axe throwers there. And the shadow. I mean, track champions. We killed quite a few here. The shadow blades. Yeah, we have lost the battle. Only intervention by the Almighty right. Lord. Fight in melee. A military genius can bring us victory from this disgrace. I don't have very good melee attack. They used their guns in melee too. They didn't have any sword or anything. Our enemies have lost their elite. from us like thieves in the night. They will not be so lucky next time. So we lost the battle. Right. Took exactly like. Leave it taken now. 2 hours 55 minutes or so. <coughs> Close defeat. Mughal Rast tank of the Trade Coalition of the Goblins. Had 4,404 goblins. Lost 4,165. Had 239 remaining. After the battle, we had two armies. And we killed 2,200. 93 of the enemy so 2293 desert trolls were killed chief, uh, chief Ukors who died, we, we managed to kill the leader the king he, he died but he had a, an army of 3021 trolls and he lost 2383, he had 638 remaining they still had two times more remaining than us killed about 3882 of our troops Okay, here are the details. Alright, but I think we will save the game after the defeat, but we will certainly try to replay it, but we will not to, to fight the battle when we sally out. That means we will have to siege the area for a few turns. So we will need to do a few turns then. We are on turn 15. Uh, we lost the campaign, we'll have to restart anyway because both our leaders died. Alright, but this is the end of this episode. In the next episode I will start exactly at the same spot where I started previously. But we won't play the actual battle. Instead we will uh, try to force them to sally out. Alright, thank you for watching. See you in the next episode.